Uh, shalom, my people. Shalom. How art thou today? You got your boy, Eliyahu Gabor Yisrael, coming at you with another one of my quick hitters for the day. Uh, I usually drop a couple of these down. Uh, I need to be doing them a little bit more often, or, you know, but as the most high moves me, is, is you know, when I come to you. But this one here is about uh, what I'm talking about today is liberty. All right. Uh, I looked at that word liberty. I went through the Bible to look it up. I should have had my computer up right now, but I went through the scriptures to look up look up that word. In a sense, and what it give you, uh, what you mostly see is freedom in that. But we must be careful with that word liberty and the freedom that we think that we have in that word. We see uh, Paul talked about liberty. We see Hamashiach, which is Christ. We see Christ talked about liberty. We, we see all that. But do we go into the uh, etymology of the word? Or go into the definitions of the word and go into the context is in which that word is being used and see what that word means. A lot of times we see that ourselves having liberty or having freedom or any it also means broad or wide. Like you can do as you will or do whatever you want. But we know that's not right. So we start to see that uh one of them is I like to harp on because it's so easy or I like to talk about because it's so easy to talk about because I studied it for a while. I studied it for a long time and that was the dietary law, especially coming from where I come from. I eat, I eat everything. But anyway, I see some people use that word liberty and say, well, Christ gave us liberty now to eat whatever we want to eat. And see, that is a dangerous thing to say because That's not true, to be honest. That's one thing. It's not true. And we must see what that word liberty means. There's a lot of things that Christ came to change or take away. And it wasn't anything of the scriptures of the word of the most high, of the word of the Lord to take away. It was mostly it was a lot of things that the uh, scribes and Pharisees had entered into the scriptures. You can go into Matthew in Matthew 7, no, 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 I think it's Matthew 15, where he talks about how the washing of the hands, uh, how you wash your hands, and you have to do all these, this whole ritual, washing your hands, and what, you know, all this, and the first thing come out of their mouth, okay, well, your disciples are eating food without washing their hands, and so they're going against the teachings or the commandments of the elders, but Christ hit them right back and said, well, look, you're going against the commandments of the Most High, so in that that's what Christ came to change and take away because that was added to the scriptures. There's nothing in there saying that you should, that you have to wash your hands. That's no commandment in that. That's a good thing to wash your hands. He's not saying that it's not a good thing to wash your hands. It's just saying that they focus more on that thing instead of focus on the commandments of the most high. They said, okay, we can do this since we got this set up. All we have to do is pray over our food and they'll be okay. That's not what the most high said. That's not what Christ said. I'm not going to turn this into a dietary law. What you call them, but it is easy to focus on the dietary law because they say you have liberty to eat what you want to now. He had made all things clean. He had no, he didn't. No, he didn't. The things he has set in his word that was de that was deemed unclean, it's, it's still unclean. It's still unclean. Now, with this word liberty, we're gonna go to Galatians five and uh, one. It says, "Stand fast." Therefore, in liberty wherewith Christ have made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. If you read all the way through this chapter right here, you see that Paul was addressing the issue of circumcision. And then people depended on circumcision to be of their salvation. Circumcision is some cutting away of the flesh. Oh, that's more dead flesh being cut away. But Paul told him, look, if you do, if you depending on that, Christ is nothing to you. If that's what you're depending on, your circumcision. You should be dependent on the death of Christ for your remissions of sin. So with that, with Christ dying on the cross, we see that it gave us some type of liberty, some type of thing, to freedom to walk around. But it's only the liberty in animal sacrifice that we see here. So be careful on what people say this broad way of living is. 
with this liberty. It was never supposed to be that way. Now, let's go down to Galatians 5 and 13. For brethren, you have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh. So they're telling you, don't use that liberty that you have been called to use for the flesh, to satisfy, satisfy the flesh that is sin. Only use not that liberty for occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. For the all the law is fulfilled in one word, even this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. So that's the liberty that he was talking about. Um, do not use that liberty to sin with just because you think you have that because you are still up under or you are still following or you should still be following the laws of the Most High that he gave you, even that dietary law that I talked about. That liberty does not give you a right just to do things broadly or widely or you think it has set you free from the Most High Word? No. That word was never a bondage. And that's what the people made it out to be. The Word of God is not a bondage. It is what the scribes and the Pharisees added to the Scripture that made it a bondage. That Word of the Most High is not a bondage. The Word of the Most High is not a bondage. Christ is not bondage. As you see, he was through the whole volume of the book. David understood this thing about this liberty. And this is the way we need to look at it as David looked at it. Uh, sometimes we look at things uh, um, and think that Paul changed something which he had no right to, if that's what you're thinking. But Paul did not change it. We come in and say that Christ changed things, which he also said he only do what his father say. His father is the most high yacht or the most high God, and he changed not. So he wasn't going to change anything. Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So he wasn't going to change anything. So why do you think this liberty that you have is for you to do whatever you want? It's not that. It's not that. And that's why we are in a sinful state of mind today. That's why we're in a sinful state of mind. That's why we act the way we act right now. That's why we do the things we do. That's why we treat the people, treat people the way we, you know, we treat them right now. And which is not good. Paul just said, you know, love one another. That's that liberty. In your liberty, love one another. In that liberty. So you have the liberty to hate now. The Bible in the Old Testament is said to love one another. To love your neighbor as yourself. To love the Most High God. You have a liberty to search, uh, find another God. You have a liberty to not to worship him on, on, on a certain day that he say worship on. They worship him. And then they, people love coming. I have the liberty to worship him every day. They did also. But he also commanded them to worship him on a certain day. You pick that day as being Sunday. Because that's what the Catholic Church had done. Told you to pick. That's not it. But anyway, let's look at it as like David looked at it. Let's go to Psalms 119 and 45. David said, this is Psalm chapter 119, verse 45. This is the Va precepts. Um, David said, and I will walk at liberty, for I seek thy precepts. Go in there and figure out what that word precepts mean. Even in his daily walk, even he walked in liberty, even the way he walked in his freedom in his broad walk that you may think now he's not looking to do his own thing, he's still seeking the word of the most high he said as I walk at liberty I seek your law, I seek your commandments I seek your precepts once we get that understanding what that liberty means what's the meaning of that liberty We will fall right in a righteous place with the Most High and Christ. We have that freedom. We have that liberty to do as we want. That's what we think. But his law keep us 
from going over. What is sin? Transgression of the law. So you don't have liberty to transgress the law. Remember that. It's no liberty to transgress the Most High Law or to break the Most High Laws. There's no liberty in that. We don't have sacrifices anymore because any sacrifice that we can offer to the Most High is not nothing compared to what he did, what his son did. That's the ultimate sacrifice. His son is our ultimate sacrifice. And there's no more sacrifice for sin. So since there are no, there's no more sacrifices for sin, again, what is sin is transgression of the law. So we must be following the law so we won't have to try to sacrifice anything for it. All we got to do is go to the Most High and repent. Go to, in the name of His only begotten Son that was our ultimate sacrifice. Repent. And that means to turn away, not to do that, <clears throat> and not to do that again. <clears throat> that's our liberty. <clears throat> well, that that's it. That's one of my quick hitters. That's what I have to say on this one today. Go into it. Check out that word liberty. Go into the Old Testament. Check out some things of the word liberty. See if you get some quick understanding about it. Uh, get some, and then it can lead you into a deep, in depth study of it. Liberty doesn't mean just to do what you want. See, Eliyahu, good boy, Israel. All praise and glory go to the Most High. Yah, again, quick hit us. I'm out.